Hi guys, it's Tim Hansen. I'm gonna walk you through the process of putting some clothes on this Superman premium format figure. Let's get started. The first part of this process, of course, we're gonna actually reference some 2D art. Uh, so we can kind of see the direction we're going in, kind of examine the layers he's gonna be wearing. We're gonna do a shirt, pants, a suit jacket, and a tie as well. I'm gonna start off by just kind of drawing on here. I draw on the resins all the time. I'm gonna find his shoulder line where I want the shirt to lay. Since both of them are pulled back and he really has this cool action of revealing the logo, then I wanna take that center line here and then do the same thing on the back. I'm gonna start at the center back here. In my initial patterning phase, I am basically trying for the best mock-up that I can. So here's the back side of the shirt. The sleeve is gonna connect uh, at the shoulder, and then we're gonna wrap it around right down here. Generally, when I'm patterning, I like to accommodate for both the seam allowance and if something has to interact with the physical sculpt. I tend to keep things long. You can see right there from the top, I'm looking at about four and five eighths of an inch. I'm basically making a body block right now. And that's kind of like the process for all of these because every sculpt is so unique. Uh, each one of these ends up being kind of a puzzle piece to figure out. Two and a quarter. I need to basically take that shirt pattern and I'm gonna turn it along with his body. And here I'm gonna do basically a somewhat generic curve, just looking at how the form is here from this angle. You can see that it makes a backwards C, if you will. So I know that's gonna have to curve to accommodate back around that arm. That's pretty much three inches. I'm not going super, super crazy specific. You do about one and seven eighths from that point. Now, this is kind of a cool thing uh, that's part of my process as well. As you can see on the pattern right now, this measurement right here, this is where his waist is at his left side. And if we look at where the center back line is, where the break of the sculpt is, it's at a completely different height. Because his torso is pulling, this shape then becomes a curve. Okay, so that's pretty much the left back of the shirt. I'm gonna do the same steps for the right side, and as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of accommodating because of the way his body is turned. I'm gonna drop this measurement straight down for right now. I wanna take that center back point and I wanna measure it to the right side of where the shirt's gonna land on his body. That's a wacky looking pattern. In my industry, this is a very normal looking pattern. The beauty of this is that once this is all done, it's gonna look like he's a guy running and he's wearing a shirt. At this point, I'm gonna go through and add seam allowances and a little bit of hem to the bottom. I usually do about 3 16 of an inch. Another thing while I'm looking at this, I wanna basically work in some additional fabric in there to accommodate for wrinkles or because he's pulling, we're gonna get some tension. So I want some tension lines. I don't want this to be an exact form-fitting uh, garment. Okay, so this is gonna be my shirt back and that's pretty much my pattern for that. Now, we're doing the front of the shirt and unlike the back of the shirt, the fronts have to be pulled open and interacting with his hands. I'm actually gonna run my tape to his fingers, kind of like this here. I'm gonna make that about eight inches long. So now I'm gonna actually flip my back pattern on here. Left side back, left side front. I'm gonna start just putting a line here for the shoulder. I wanna keep it the same size, same width as this one. About one and a quarter inches here. So I have to determine the depth, of course, as to where that armhole's gonna be. So normally for that, I just, I wrap my tape across the front here there and I'm coming where a shirt would naturally close right here. Five eighths of an inch down. So here we are at this armpit point and I'm going to bring it right down to the waist here.
I'm going to go through and add, again, same process. I'm going to add my 316 seam allowance uh, all around this pattern. I want to make sure I'm giving myself enough room to do something called a double fold hem. If you look at the bottom of most shirts, basically fold it over once and then again to give you a nice clean edge on the bottom. So I'm going to give myself a little bit more room, but I also want to keep it in scale. I'm going to go ahead and cut out my back and then kind of line it up with where I'm going to sew it together with my front just to make sure that my lines are lining up and that it'll stitch well together. Okay, so basically this is what I wanted to do right here. I'm looking at the overall arcing shape of these two together, which is really important. Feels pretty cool right there. Seam allowance, I'm gonna take out this line, make sure everything's running in conjunction with each other here. This is my shirt left front. Okay, now I'm gonna take the same process, I'm gonna repeat it for the right side. We've seen patterning for the shirt front, the shirt back as well, so how about that sleeve? Oftentimes, sleeves can be different fronts and backs. Uh, if I can, uh, just for the ease of patterning and uh, for production sake, I do try to make the pattern, the fronts and backs the same. Okay, and then because I'm mirroring this pattern, I'm just gonna lightly cut along that center line so it'll be easier just to fold over and cut the rest of it that way. Okay, and there you have it. My mock-up sleeve right there. I've actually gone through a few iterations now of the shirt, doing some fine tuning and some adjustments here and there, but I wanted to show you a little bit, at least on paper, of the process that I'm going through as I'm patterning for these things. Uh, here we have the right fronts of the shirt, for example. So in accommodating for how a shirt is supposed to work, I realized that because he has to be grabbing it, I actually have to add a curve I'm gonna dress this one so you guys can see kind of where I'm at right now and then how I'm gonna evolve onto the final stage. We want these things to mimic, you know, real life uh, in a lot of ways if possible. When I initially did my first measurements and patterning, I didn't accommodate for the extra material that's in his upper back. So I went through and then I wanted to add some back behind the collar because, you know, if you could imagine he's pulling back this much, that shirt's gonna be wrinkling back there. The next one, I'm gonna alter this line just a little bit where the collar's going, and then I'm gonna change the length on some of these at the bottom. With that being said, these are my final patterns for my shirt. There's the sleeve here, and this is the collar with the collar stand attached to it. I'm gonna lay them out on my fabric I've selected for the shirt and um, cut them out. Normally we make uh, at least two prototypes of a figure, so I'll basically be cutting out two sets at one time. Cool. Okay, so I've cut out my final pattern pieces. Uh, now I just wanted to go through and show you basically uh, how I'm gonna sew them together. These will meet up on the shoulders here, as will these, and then this seam and this seam will connect, which is actually the side of the shirt. This sleeve piece will go right there, same on either side. So our next step is uh, sewing these pieces together. And I'm gonna start by sewing the seams at the shoulders here. Classic old sewing term is right sides together. So this is the wrong side or the inside of the fabric. And there you have our shoulder seam right there. I'm gonna do the same thing for the left side here. So there we go, both shoulders are now together. Right now I'm gonna go press these so they're flat and then I'm gonna do a quick top stitch along that shoulder edge to make sure the seam stays flat. All right, so the next thing I actually wanna do is put these sleeves on. So that sleeve looks great. I'm actually gonna repeat the process for the right side sleeve. That same top stitch that I did to the shoulder seam, I'm gonna do also to the armhole seam. And it's definitely beginning to look like a shirt. The next thing I wanna do is add two rectangular plackets. And then over that, I'm gonna put the collar, which goes all around the neck hole up here at the top. And then my final step is gonna be basically sewing up the sleeves and the sides of the shirt. That'll make for a complete sewn shirt. 
One last thing I wanna do before I actually put this shirt uh, onto the resin body is I'm gonna run some wire just right up this channel that I made right here. Now it has the ability to pose any way you want it. Gonna remove the arms. It's gonna be dressed one arm at a time. The right side is still gonna be tucked into the pants here. So I'm gonna create some tension by separating him. Down. As an example, this is, uh, this is pretty much how it's gonna look. All right, so the shirt's done. I'm now gonna repeat this process for the pants and the suit jacket and the tie. Make some more patterns, do more mock-ups. And by the end of this, we should have a pretty killer looking prototype. And there we have it. Our Superman premium format figure is now fully clothed. And wow, what a project that was. It was challenging, it was a lot of fun. I'm ecstatic with how it turned out.